Hey everyone, I'm Sarah and welcome to my art stream. Today we're going to be doing an acrylic painting. Um, happy 4th of July to those of you in the United States. It is our Independence Day and um, so everybody is um, probably celebrating in the best way they can given the conditions, um, but I have heard some fireworks going on around. So uh, let's see. Crixano says, hello, you're not following along uh, at your grandma's house able to watch. Cool, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate that. I appreciate you joining me despite being with your family. So um, thank you. I um, hope that you enjoy today's um, lesson. Like I said, it's, it's um, holiday themed because today is July 4th. So it is very American. We are doing the American flag. Um, so if you are not in the United States, you may not really want to do this. Um, you may want to paint your own flag. So if you want to go all the way up into the flag and then, um, you know, just, just listen to my instructions and, and then kind of, um, take it from there using the colors in your flag, then you can. Um, okay. But let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies first. So we've got water, of course, for our paint. Um, I've got uh, my paint brushes. I've got a three quarter wash brush. Um, also, this would be like a size 10 or 12 filbert if you were um, not buying the Grumbacher brand. Um, this is a size six round brush. Those are the two brushes we'll be using today. I also have a pencil and a ruler, which I don't normally have for acrylic painting. Um, but today we are going to do a little bit of pre-drawing just because we want to paint the black sky around the flag. So, um, I've got those. You can do it without the ruler. So don't worry if you don't have that. Um, I've got a palette to put my paint in, a canvas. I've got five colors and, um, it does not have to be a specific brand. As you can see, I actually have different brands here cause I ran out of titanium white and um, apparently titanium white on the market right now is just completely out of stock everywhere. <coughs> so I happen to have some of this on hand from like an old art project, but we've got white, red, blue, and yellow, which is, are your primary colors and brown. So those are the three colors that, um, I mean, five colors your primary colors and then brown and white. And, and as long as you have those, it really almost doesn't matter the brand. Um, there is a different kind of acrylic paint called craft paint that looks like this, like in a little bottle. This is too liquid. So you want to get the kind, the heavy body kind that are in the tube. Um, because the, the, this, this just will be a hot mess. Okay. So I'm going to put these to the side. I also have paper towels. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's going to be key going to be very important. Now, last thing I want to do is I want to show you, um, I'm going to pull up the reference photo that we're going to be going off of today. So if you notice right here at the bottom of my screen, I've got a, a discord. Hey, Guildfly, haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, Here's the link to my Discord, but it is just the address. If you want the link, then here we go. I'm gonna put it in the chat and you can follow that link and um, you can access reference photos. You can see other artists that have uploaded their work and um, you can even upload your own work if you would like to. Um, I would love for you to share your work with us. Okay, um, Guildfly, yes, I am well. Thank you very much for asking. I hope you are too. And Teacher Margo, welcome um, to the stream. Also haven't seen you in a while, so this is a, a special treat. I've got a lot of visitors today, so great, great day for a holiday. Okay, so let's go take a look at Discord and see what we're gonna be painting today. All right. So when you come over to um, when you come over to Discord, you'll notice several channels, and there's one called Reference Photos. And in Reference Photos, you can I, I post the photo every day that we do a stream 
I will post what our reference photo is going to be earlier in the day so you can go ahead and look at it. You can always click open original here which will open a, a larger version of it. Um, but this is what we're going to be painting today. So because we're going to paint the black around the flag we are going to do a little bit of drawing. So grab your pencil, just a number two pencil is fine. And we're going to get started. Okay. Thank you, Flux. I appreciate that. Okay, so I've got my ruler, but you do not need a ruler necessarily if you're good at drawing straight lines. The key to drawing a straight line is to move your entire arm rather than your wrist. You don't want to move your wrist because you don't have as much um, steadiness that way, but if you move your entire arm, you're using bigger muscles, so you have a little bit more steadiness. Okay, so I'm going to put it just at a slight angle so it's not much but it's not straight up and down either. I'm going to put it just slightly angle to the right and I'm going to go probably to about maybe about two inches down okay so I'll show you there's that line there then not too far from it maybe quarter of an inch. I'm really not good at measuring distance here. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, then we'll have like a little ball on the top, just, just around something or other. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a backwards D. You don't need the ruler anymore because we're going to freehand everything else. Flex said, very groggy, just woke up from a nap, brewing tea now. Are you having um, Earl Grey? I know we've discussed that you like Earl Grey. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a long backwards D. Bueno, love Earl Grey. Um, starting probably about, let's say about halfway. So like about halfway down our pole here. We're going to come up and scoop up and then gradually scoop back in like that. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw, let's see, let's do a line. We're just going to let it kind of be flowy. So let it flow a little bit and then stop. Then we're going to do an abrupt change. And again, I'm just being kind of flowy about it. I'm not being super precise because we want it to give the appearance that it's flapping in the breeze. All right, and then on this side, I'm gonna scoop up a little bit and then come down and then scoop up again. So it's a little S. And you'll see when you see flags, I'm gonna show you my tattoo here. Um, I've got this pirate flag here. Flags generally do that, like there's that kind of undulation and that just gives the indication that it is flapping. So that is a 2D way of making movement appear in your painting. Okay, we are done with the pencil, so you can put that away. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna paint our black around the um, flag. So, first things first, and by the way, if you don't wanna get your clothes messy, I highly recommend an apron or some kind of cover or something because um, acrylic paint is permanent. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the first color we're going to do is we're going to make a black. And so the way you make black is we're going to take our brown, like a decent amount of it, because we're going to need a lot of black to cover this whole canvas. Then we're going to do a little red and a little blue. So brown plus purple equals black. I know that sounds weird, but I promise you 
it works. So a little red, so I'm just doing a dollop of red and a dollop of blue. About the same amount. Ooh, if you get a little bit more blue, that's not that big of a deal, but the blue I'm using is phthalo blue. Let me go ahead and get a paper towel here. I got a little bit of red on my, my tube, so I just wanna wipe that off. So it doesn't contaminate. Oh, you know what I was missing? Didn't even think about it, a palette knife. You gotta mix our paint somehow. So this is what you want, some kind of palette knife. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mix this. And it should be getting darker. Now the only way to test exactly how dark your color is, is to put it on something. Now this looks a little bit too red to me, and I want my sky to be a little bit more blue. Um, I've got a lot of red in the fireworks. So I'm gonna add just a wee bit more blue to this. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna actually just put it on the edge of my um, palette knife there so I don't have to worry about trying to you know, get it to come off or anything like that. So not, not a lot. I just want to give it a slightly more blue tint since the sky is blue. What we're looking for is basically almost like a, almost black navy. Okay. So this should be pretty good. And look how dark that is. That's pretty dark. All right, now we're gonna take our large brush and first we wanna get the air bubbles out. So I'm gonna push it down at the bottom and see the bubbles are already coming out. And I push it down back and forth until I don't see bubbles coming anymore, okay? Then what you're gonna do here, I'm gonna wipe this off, actually. I like to always get, if I have a little bit of excess paint, I like to get that off of the, uh, the palette knife first. Waste not, want not, you know? Okay, so I'm going to just come at the edge of the paint, and what that does is, I, since I have some water on my brush, it makes it a little bit more fluid, like it just mixes the water in with the paint. Then, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start painting short little strokes. Now, we're gonna probably have to do more than one. And see, that is a nice bluish, I'll hold that up so you can see it. So it's, it's like a bluish black. We're gonna probably have to do more than one coat. We want our sky to be very opaque, meaning not see-through. So I'm just doing short little strokes just for coverage. When I get to the flag, I'll show you, we're gonna be a little bit more careful because we, we don't wanna mess up our clean lines that we just made. I'm gonna get a tiny bit more water. If you don't have water, what happens is um, you start getting something called dry brushing and dry brushing is when let me see if I can imitate it here, like that, where you can actually see through it. But what you really want is you want it to go on smoothly. Now I put some paper down underneath. I think that's a handy idea. Look what's already happening. So you definitely don't want to get your table, get paint on your table, that wouldn't be great. Okay, so I'm just going up to my flag, but I'm not gonna go right right next to it yet, just not yet. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space just now. See, it's starting to dry brush there, meaning that it's not flowing smoothly. It's getting caught on the, um, the little, little teeth in the canvas. There's like a texture.
Okay. It's still just going around the flag. We're not gonna get up close to it just yet. It's starting to dry brush again, so that's when you know you need a little tiny bit of water just to mix it in. Now the good thing about doing short little strokes like this is it will dry a little bit faster. And since we're doing two coats, we want it to dry. Otherwise, what you can do is you can get like a hair dryer and you can just dry it. Actually watching paint dry is quite satisfying because um, when you dry it with a hair dryer, you can actually see it go from shiny to matte finish. And um, I don't know, there's just something very oddly satisfying about it. Like you're just watching that the matte finish just kind of travel across the painting as you, as you um, run the dryer across it. Okay, I'm dry brushing some again. Sometimes dry brushing is actually like a good technique and you want that. Um, like for example, say you were doing like a field of flowers and you wanted to chop in some, um, you know, some wild flowers, like in a little, a little bit of grass maybe. And so, you know, you, you, want, you want to get like to where it's not completely covering, right? So, so sometimes dry brushing can be very handy. Or if you want to give the appearance of like a light, like a, a light snow, you know, dry brushing across that can be really nice. But most of the time, with acrylic painting anyway, you want it to be smooth, especially if you're blending. Now, if you're a more impressionistic painter, then dry brushing might actually be your friend you might want to do some some interesting brush strokes and you want to see the brush strokes okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna actually use my small brush because there's a lot of really little fine details I don't want to wash this just yet because we are going to be using it again very soon we need to push our our small brush our six size six brush down get all of those bubbles out okay and then we're gonna pick up some paint and do kind of the same thing where we're just kind of mixing the water in there okay so I'm gonna start just coming right up to the edge doesn't matter if you keep a perfectly straight line the cool thing about painting now it's not like watercolor where it can really be loose and and kind of casual um, but you know with paintings it doesn't have to be exact you know I mean that's one of the the cool things about it is that the human eye will perceive something to be exact even when it's not so even if you don't have a perfectly straight line like there's a couple little jagged edges or something like that someone will still look at it and still see a straight flagpole like even if you're looking at this now, that looks pretty straight, but I can see that there's all kinds of little inconsistencies in it. So um, this is the great thing about art for humans. You're making your art for people who have an imperfect eye. Remember that. Remember that just by you doing your painting, you are already setting yourself up as an artist which is more than your average person has the skill level. So even if your painting isn't perfect, I guarantee it's better than someone who doesn't do any painting at all because they don't have a painting. So they're going to look at your painting and they're going to be like, wow, I know this to be true. Oop, this is dry brushing a little bit. I know this to be true because I've had many students who were very young, you know, seven, eight years old, and granted, yes, people kind of make a big deal about kid paintings. But, um, I mean, these kids were pretty good, actually. But the thing about it is, is it wasn't that they were good. It was that they did it. And that's the thing about art, or really anything else. 
It's kind of like me learning programming. I'm not great, you know. I'm learning Python right now, and, and um, you know, I'm okay. I, there's a lot of concepts that I'm kind of iffy on. But you know what? I'm a better programmer than somebody who doesn't program at all, right? You know, and if I keep working at it, I might even be a decent programmer, right? You know, so, uh, I mean, that's the thing, is that you don't have to be perfect at everything. You don't have to be great. I've been doing art for, you know, 30 plus years. I have quite a bit of practice. I just realized I'm putting my arm down in this, but luckily it was dry. <laughs> um, I have quite a bit of practice. You know, so my paintings, my drawings are probably going to look pretty good. You know, I'm a trained artist and I've been doing it a very long time. But um, I'm going to turn my painting upside down so I have a little bit different access to it. But this is my point. My point is, is don't get down on yourself about how terrible your artwork is or whatever. Because again, it's better than the person who doesn't do it at all. You know, you're making art. You're doing something that you love or at the very least enjoy. And there are plenty of people out there that say, man, I really wish I could paint something. I really wish I could draw something. And they're not doing it. So you know what? You're already a step ahead of them. So it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad or whatever. It really doesn't matter. Like I said, it's better than nothing at all. And uh, I know that doesn't sound very comforting, but trust me, most people aren't amazed at the art itself. They're amazed that you had the guts to do it, that you put in the effort. That's what people are really amazed at because that's what they wish they had done. They wish they had taken that art class. They wish they had picked up that paintbrush. So just by you doing that, you're setting yourself apart. And I, I really try to get my kids to, to think about that because, you know, kids especially are hard on themselves, which I think is so funny because, you know, I mean, they're, they're young, right? So, I mean, how could they possibly be superstars already when they're, you know, eight years old? But kids want to be perfect at something right away, you know? And so they're very hard on themselves. And um, it's the one thing I always tell them, I'm like, think about all your friends who don't paint who don't draw, they're going to think your painting and drawing, are, you know, they're, that they're wonderful. They are. And if anybody disparages your work, you didn't want their opinion anyway, because I'm going to be honest, it's probably because they're jealous. Not lying. So that's my, my confidence speech for today, that it's important to appreciate what you have and not what you want. All right, so we're getting close. I keep picking up a little bit of water. Um, Crixano says, sometimes I feel like a lot of things you say are, are almost like speaking directly to me, at least partially. Or maybe that just shows the wide applicability of what you say. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I think it is. You know, this is one of the things I say about teaching. I think it's the wide applicability of it. And here's why. Um, I teach art. I have also taught piano, which I will eventually, as soon as I get a keyboard, I'm going to teach piano. I'm going to start teaching piano on um, Twitch as well. Because I think that it's an important skill for people to learn. Even just if it's, you know, basic. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have any... Again, it's like art. You don't have to be a superstar at it. You just have to do it. Um, but the, the thing is, is that what I teach is really irrelevant to me. For me, teaching confidence is what's important. And you can use any subject matter, you know. It, it doesn't, the subject matter is, is less relevant and uh, it's more about learning to love learning and learning to love yourself and how you learn. So, you know, I could be teaching anything. 
Guildfly says, I must say I'm following on this, but I don't have the paint set up. So mainly drawing and using pencil crayon. That's great. Actually, you know, if, especially if you, um, are doing, and, and you could really do any of my paintings. You could also do through digital art. I don't know if any of you out there are doing, you know, do digital, but you could, all of my stuff is, and in fact, at some point, um, I am going to start teaching again, when I get a really nice drawing tablet, um, I am going to start teaching, um, some of my paintings, I'm going to teach them as digital paintings because um, it's really not that different. It's just like a little bit, the technique is a slightly different, but it, it's about the same. Gilfly says, but you've got good erasures, so should be good. Awesome. I love it. Well, I'm just happy that you're following along. I really appreciate that. Okay. My poor computer. I can hear it. It's so loud. I need to build a new computer. It's like I need all new things, you know? <laughs> And of course, all the things that I want are very expensive. I don't have cheap taste. Not in like electronics and stuff like that, so. Now here's the good news about us using the small brush is that um, we won't have to do a second coat probably up close. We'll only have to do a second coat out in the, you know, the, the outer regions there because um, we're, we're doing it slow enough that we can get a little bit more paint on the canvas. You know, another thing you could probably do, because we are going to be doing the fireworks over the black. And again, I, if you weren't on the stream, I just want to remind you that I am painting an American flag, but if you are not American, you could save, I'm saving the flag until last. And so um, you could just listen to the techniques that I teach and then paint your own country's flag because, you know, obviously not everybody wants to paint an American flag. Um, you know, you know, this isn't your country. I don't know why you would want to unless you just really love us. Also, not sure why, but, you know, you never know. Everybody's got a different taste. Ooh, that water's pretty. You don't have cheap taste in electronics either. I think most of us don't. I think electronics are one of those things. Okay, I'm getting my big brush again and I'm gonna go around the outside. See how you can see like some of, see through the canvas? We want this to be dark, dark, dark. Um, yeah, I think generally electronics are one of those things that, uh, oops, I got a lot of water in here. So I'm just gonna mix it all. I did not mean to get it that watery. Um, electronics is one of those things that if you do it right, it is expensive. Some electronics I don't mind, like my little Bluetooth earbuds or whatever. I don't care if I get inexpensive ones. Uh, cause mostly because I, I go through those things, you know, I, I wear them a lot to the gym, whatnot. Well, the good thing about me putting too much water is now I don't have to continue Grabbing water. We're almost done with our background. We'll finally have a black sky and a flag or the outline of a flag, the silhouette of a flag. And I just, when I get close to the pole, I just turn my brush sideways. So instead of going like this, I turn it like that. And I'm, again, I'm still doing short strokes, but I just do it sideways. All right, we're getting down to the line and I made like the perfect amount of black because I am almost out. Okay. Now we do need this to dry, but we're going to be mixing some colors. I'll just get a little bit in there. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and wash that brush. And we're gonna let it dry. Is there a style of painting that would just be done here with the black and white? Um, hmm. I mean, you could always go with just like the silhouette of something, right? Like rather than actually painting something or you could um, do like a monochromatic where you pick just one color and paint the entire thing that color, especially for symbolic. You know, like if you wanted to paint the entire thing red for like blood or something like that. I mean, it just depends on what you're painting it for. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you could leave it as a silhouette if you wanted to. Um, I don't see why not. I don't know what the style would be though. Okay. So actually, you know what? I'm going to do something. I don't normally do this. I do this with watercolor sometimes, but I'm going to actually, because acrylic is a pain in the butt to clean once it's dry completely. So since that is still a little bit wet and there's not much in there, I'm just going to like get most of that out. There you go. Because that way it doesn't just dry in there since I'm not using it anymore. Okay. So now we're going to create kind of a, um, we'll do like our reddish color. All right. So you're actually liking this painting just the way it is right now. Oh yeah. Well, it is pretty cool. I mean, you could go a lot of places with this, right? So, I mean, you could make this a pirate flag, right? You could put a skull and crossbones. I mean, you can get your pencil out and you can, you would want to make sure, uh, let's say whatever you're doing, I'll go ahead and tell you this now in case you want to go forward with this. Because the flag is facing away from us this way, like it's flapping a little bit, then what anything on this side of the flag is going to be smaller. I mean, uh, bigger rather, sorry, bigger. And anything on this side is going to be smaller. So everything's going to kind of narrow and get smaller. Um, and it's also going to foreshorten. So what foreshortening is, is that if say, you know, I have my hand, but since I'm, say I'm coming at you, well now my hand looks like, well, let's see, you know, it looks like it's only that big, but of course that's not how big my hand is. But because it's foreshortened, see? So like foreshortening means that it's just squishing it a little bit and making it look more condensed. Um, so that makes it look like it's coming at you or away from you in this particular case. So um, keep in mind that the size of the flag on this side is the same as this side, but look how much smaller this side is, right? So that's what you need to do. So whatever you draw over here, uh, like let's say you were doing the Union Jack, you know, your, your line, your, like um, where they come together, you know, in the corner here, like where you have the, the stripe comes together, um, you, you would want it to be more narrow than it is here. Here it would be wider, here it would be more narrow. And it would, so that way it looks like it's going away from you. Okay, so we're gonna mix a little bit of paint Let's do some red. And I just did a squish of red. But thank you, Crixano, by the way, for saying you liked it the way it is. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, let's see. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of yellow. Just a tiny bit, not much. All this is gonna do is kind of warm up my red a little bit. Just gonna make it like almost like a, a very red orange. Okay. I'm making a decent amount of this because we'll be using it for our flag later. Although we are gonna mix a little blue in there. because at least for the American flag anyway, it's more of a blood red. All right. I'm just wiping my, wiping my palette knife there. Okay, now I'm looking to see if I'm dry. 
So if you if you look at it at an angle, let's see if you can, guys can see. See how there's some shiny bits here? So those are not dry yet, but up here is dry. So there's like a little part that's not dry, but up here is dry. So there's a couple things you can do. Um, you can use a hair dryer, of course. Um, you can. Um, just wait. I mean, that's that's the other option. Although I do not have that option because we need to, you know, get moving. Um, here's what we're gonna do to give it the chance to dry a little bit more. We're gonna make some more of our colors. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. We are going to mix a little bit of yellow with a. I mean, we're, well, we're gonna mix yellow, but we just don't need much of it with a little tiny bit of white. Also, very little bit of white. We do not need much. But here's the kicker about using white. So I'm gonna show you this from the side, like hardly any white. Um, yellow is very transparent, meaning that when you paint it on, you've gotta do several layers because it's so see-through. Whereas white, believe it or not, the titanium white is not. So if we mix a little bit of the white with the yellow, it lightens it a little bit, but it doesn't lighten it enough where we're losing our yellow color. Instead, what it does is it makes it more opaque. So it makes it a little bit less translucent, and then we don't have to use nearly as, much, as many coats. So that's a little trick for you there. I always mix in, like, um, same thing happens with brown. So if you have a dark color, mix in just a tiny bit of that, like, that's more translucent. For example, the blue. This blue is very translucent, meaning, again, meaning it's kind of see-through. So if you mix just a tiny bit of brown in with it, that really helps with coverage. So, okay, we're still not completely dry. This part up here is almost dry. Um, if I have to, I will grab, we're gonna go ahead and make our blue, but if I have to, I will grab um, uh, I have a little dryer that I can hook up. Okay, so we're gonna make blue. Now our, we're gonna have two different blues. So this one is just for the fireworks, so we don't need too much of it. This we're gonna add a tiny bit of white to. Oh, well good, see? Always a reason to come to my stream. You never know what you're gonna learn. <laughs> so, so now we've got the blue. We're gonna add a tiny bit of white Oh, it's, I, I actually just took it off with my finger because it's such a small amount. I don't want it to be too terribly light. We'll mix the blue. If I have to add a little bit more blue, we can. But I think actually this is going to be a good color. Yeah, that's going to be a great color. Okay. Okay. I have to get a new napkin soon. Look at that. I'm like using it all up it's from cleaning out that black. Okay. So we've got our red, blue, and yellow. Let's see. What other colors do we have in here? We're going to do a pure white. Um, and we can go ahead and now we don't need to put the white in yet. All right. I think we're good for our mixing colors. Right now, this is still wet over here. So what I'm going to do, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab, grabbing my uh, little dryer here. an ordeal it was like stuck on something so what I have these are really handy so this is actually a shrink wrapper so it's made for when you have to uh, when you have like um, that cellophane or whatever that you can make gift baskets out of you can actually shrink it up a little bit but it works really well as a paint dryer and it's more compact than a hair dryer so I'm going to use this. 
Okay, so what did I miss? You were just thinking that the empty flag, it's the only thing we see against the almost black background. It could symbolize many things. That is true. And Guildfly says, I'm going to watch back tomorrow as well when you have all your paints. Awesome. Well, that makes me so happy. All right, so I'm just going to turn this on. Hopefully it's not too terribly loud. That's the other thing. These aren't nearly as loud as hair dryers. Still loud, but not too bad. So all I'm doing, notice I'm shaking it back and forth. You can go like broader strokes if you want, but it's important and I want to make sure you guys can hear me. It's important that you move back and forth when you're drying because acrylic paint will, will start to bubble up and it has chemicals in it and you'll start to smell the chemicals um, because they are burning and that is not great for your lungs. So you want to keep your um, hair dryer or, or shrink wrapper or whatever it is you're using, um, uh, even a heat gun, anything, you want to keep it moving. Okay. I'm not going to lie, it actually looks really cool when it bubbles up, um, especially when you're using these kind of paints. Um, like if you just sit there and hold the hair dryer on it, it'll start to bubble and like, um, like the paint will puff up and stuff. And it actually looks really cool. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty awesome, but I don't recommend it cause it's not healthy for you. <laughs> it's not healthy to breathe that in. So don't do it <laughs> even if it looks cool. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our six. I'm going to get mine wet again because it's been a little while and we're going to grab our red paint. So come right in the side. Remember, we're just kind of mixing our water in from our brush. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with a center. So let's see, we've got like, let's say this is our center right here and we're just going to do uh, all I'm doing and you can practice this. I don't want to practice with my wet brush, obviously, but you can practice this on your hand with a, with a clean brush, very barely touching. And then you kind of scoop away. So you touch and then scoop, touch and then scoop in whatever direction you're going, touch, scoop, touch, scoop. And when, by the scooping away, what that does is that makes it very narrow. Okay. So, and you can do straight lines touch scoop like that touch scoop touch scoop oop that was too too much scoop not enough touch you guys i played this game last night that i really enjoyed i just got it on steam it's called line light i recommend it it's pretty fun and it's very simple, and that's why I like simple, but it's a puzzle game. Uh, I almost just got paint on myself. That wouldn't have been good. So we don't have to be too picky about these lines. I know that I was at first, because we're gonna actually be putting a bunch of them. And if you get to some lines that are too thick, don't worry about it, not a big deal. You can always make it into two lines like that. So it looks like it's just two streams that are very close together. I'm gonna get a tiny bit more water. So we want this part to be very fluid. So I'm gonna actually start on another one and I'll come back to this and do more on that. All right, so I'm gonna do one here. Oops, that one, see that one was thicker than I wanted. So I might come out that. I don't know. You don't have to even fix it. Like I said, the human eye will, uh, will make it look right in the rain. Now, when we get close to the flag, what I would do is instead of starting from the middle, because it's going behind the flag. So I would start from the actual flag itself and just go very carefully like that. All right, I'm going to do another little, little guy here. Um, oops. 
The other thing about when it starts to dry brush is that's when you get the thicker lines. You get the thinner lines because when it's wet, it points. It makes the point at the end of your brush. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Um, now in our reference photo, there's one that's coming from behind the flag. So I'm gonna, I'm, like I said, I'm painting the flag first. I've got a lot of paint loaded on my brush, so that's called paint loading. When you've got too much paint on your brush. Sorry, there's like little wet spots where I dripped water. Um, okay, I'm gonna get a new pa paper towel because it's starting to like get other colors that I didn't, not even using on my hand. Ugh. If you're thinking of a bunch of ideas for how you could change the painting to cover some things that you're thinking. That's very cool. See, this is what's great. And actually, this is my favorite thing about doing like a, a, something with fireworks in it is because um, you can make it your own. You don't have to put your fireworks in the same place as mine. Put them wherever. Make it exciting. This is great. I mean, this is like an ideal painting for customizing. Don't make an American flag. Make whatever flag you want. Make a pirate flag. Make your own country flag. Doesn't matter. I'm making an American flag because I'm American and also because it's a 4th of July painting. So there you go. But you don't have to. Convey. I Sorry. Cover, convey. They're very similar in that particular context. All right. So I'm going to do, now I'm going to save down here. I'm gonna do something different. You don't have to, but I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do one of those fireworks that comes up and like you see the stream and then see it explode. And we're gonna do that there. So. And I'm doing slightly curved lines, but you can actually do straight, straight out lines. Okay, now I've got some fireworks. We're gonna go in and we're gonna put even more on top of that. So everything should be pretty dry because we're just doing very small strokes. Now these, you don't have to cover the same lines. Do different lines. Make it look really explosive. Your painting might be a bit political though. Well, that's okay, you know what, that's okay. Um, you can, if you think that it's too political and you think that it will offend somebody, you can always put it in a spoiler. Um, I've done that with many, many pictures that are just a little bit, uh, for me, it's usually I'm posting something a little naughty, you know, so I'll put spoilers. But, you know, I mean, the thing is, is that if it's just, it depends on how political it is. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that art is welcome, at least in, in my Discord. Now, I accidentally painted on there, but that's okay, because we're going to be painting over with the dark blue, so it's not too, well, for those of us making American flags, we're going to be painting over with a dark blue. All right, so now we're looking even more explosive. And I'm not painting every line anymore. I'm just painting, you know. Oh, I forgot this little guy here. Can't forget about him. I'm cleaning off my brush altogether because it was starting to paint load again. All paint loading means, I think I said it earlier and then didn't explain what it is, but Paint, paint loading is when you have too much paint on the brush and it starts moving back towards this part, which I can't ever remember the name of it, but if you get paint inside of there, it is no bueno, because what'll happen is it will dry and uh, it will, um, your bristles will start to fall out. And you know, I don't know about you, but I like buying nice brushes, so I don't want my bristles to fall out. I want to take care of my brushes and just washing it doesn't 
always get rid of it. So um, it is important that you that you uh, watch how much paint you're loading on the brush. Okay, so we've got our fireworks. This this fireworks real fun there. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is remember this yellow that we did? We're going to actually start painting some of the yellow like right from the middle. Now it can mix a little bit, but I do want this to be dry. So I don't know why I put my dryer away. I should just leave it plugged in. All right, so here we go, dryer again. So the little flaming pieces that are falling, as Crixano just said, is, uh, by the way, when that dryer, is that too loud? Because if it is, I can mute my microphone while I'm doing that. So I don't know how loud that's coming across to you guys, if that's just like blowing out your ears or something. But if you guys could tell me, that would be great to know, especially for future, future streams. Okay. Uh, of how you would paint the little flaming pieces that are falling. Well, we're going to actually be painting those with white uh, later. Ah, good. Good ideas. Okay, I like that. All right, so we're going to pick up our yellow. And I'm going to start just exploding from the middle. What's good is that because we added our white in here, it provides a little bit more coverage. Like that. I'm gonna get a little more water. All right, let's see. I'm gonna do that. All right, now I'm going to do a couple of these. I'm stopping my brush from getting loaded. I'm gonna do a couple of just yellow ones. So let's see, I'm gonna do a couple right here. And we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the red where I'm gonna let a, a few of them go off the page, but where we go over it with the second coat Okay. Let's see. Do I want to do any other yellow ones? Um, let's do well, let's do some yellow coming from this one. I almost forgot about this guy because he was hiding. Um, oh, how did I almost forget about this guy again? Little guy. Why do I keep missing you? Okay. From this guy, I'm gonna actually put some like kind of like dot and then, so this is the, those little flaming pieces. You do, you like push the, let me see if I can show you guys this without my hand in the way. How about that? Push it down and then whoop. So you're welcome to make the sound effects for this. I feel like the sound effects are pretty helpful. But so you go boop, 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 like that. See, so you push and then bloop, and then you get these little tiny. You can also make that sound, the little clicky sound. Okay, at the risk of revealing too much, how would you convey a white thing on fire? Oh man. Uh, well, so with a flag, it's gonna singe, especially since flags mostly are acrylic now. So the, if this was on fire, let's say the flag was on fire, it would start, you'd have like a dappled, um, you'd have like a dappled black. Okay. 
So like, let's say we have our, our flag. Okay. All right. So like, let's say we wanted to put this on fire. What you're going to do is you're going to have black that's like dappled, right? So it's going to be kind of dotted and, and then singe like a little bit more here, you know, but it's singed along the edges in like weird places, you know, cause it's burning. And then you're going to have your flames kind of coming up from here. So you can actually take like reds and yellows and do like, and it's going to be kind of licking. It's going to go over that singed part, you know, like that. And it, everything's going up. The flames are always going up, right? So like that. Ta-da. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's do a little bit more yellow. I'm going to I'm going to do a couple of little guys down here. There's going to be little ones. These are like little like the kid fireworks, you know. Like a couple little We have a we have diverse fireworks in our sky. All ages are welcome. Okay, so I'm going to have a couple like little you know dots or a little boop. Hold on. I didn't really get a good boop on that. Maybe I should be doing my clicking. That's better. Like. <laughs> I'm telling you, the sound effects help. So here's some streamers. They're coming out. I've got some, maybe some coming from the side, like, you know, some in there. And then what about a flag that was on fire and is damaged, but no longer is that would just be the black. Then that would be like that dappled black. And you would want to make it with the Brown with a little bit heavy on the Brown. So remember how earlier we made the black and I put mostly Brown and a little bit of blue and red, you would want it to be a little bit more on the red side. And you would want to make sure that there was like basically a lot of brown, just a very tiny little bit of red, and a very tiny little bit of blue. So mostly brown. You're basically just making your brown slightly blackened. A blackened brown? That sounds really weird. But anyway. Okay, let's see. What else am I going to do? Um, let's do... I'm going to do like a squiggly line here. And that's not very dark. You can't see that squiggly line. And all I'm doing is kind of shaking my brush as I go. So I'm doing it in a line, but I'm shaking my brush. And those are like those streamers. So there's going to be like a, you know, this, this kind of ball of light at the end. And it's going to have, it's going to come, have light coming out of it. but it's going to go behind the flagpole and that's tricky. So you just want to almost like what I do is I start drawing my line, just pick up my brush slightly and then bring it right back down as if I was continuing the line. Remember the human eye will, will follow it. It will make it a whole line. Okay. So we've got that. Um, let's see. From this, I might do, I'm going to put my brush on the side. Let's see. I'm going to do it with down. Mm, yeah, I like that. I had to think about that. So I'm putting my brush on its side and just swiping. That didn't work. We're going to do this with multiple colors. So I'm, I'm testing this out. <laughs> that might not look so great right now. We'll see. 
Oh, I don't know why I cleaned my yellow because I'm going to actually do, remember how we're going to do where we, we paint over? We're only going to do the ones where we did pure yellow. Okay. Eh, whatever. Well, Craig Sano, you said, I already said it was political, so I have some guesses. But that's okay. Yeah, you do. You do your political stuff, that's fine. Like I said, if you think it's too political or you think like, you know, remember, I do have some kids that come on my server. Um, I mean, they're all like in their teens. So, you know, it's not too bad. But since I do have some younger folks on my server, then, um, you know, just keep that in mind. And like I said, put put spoilers. Uh, the little, um, I don't remember what those are called, but, you know, the little, the two, two little things on either side that make it a spoiler. Okay. Let's see. Now let's do. Let's do our blue. So we're going to get a little bit of our blue on here. And we're going to have, we're just going to come out. These are just the little accents. So these are just like coming out. in little places. So see how I'm not doing them everywhere. Now see, I put that blue right in the middle of that and look, fixed it. That's what you do. You just make up for it in some other way if you make a mistake. No biggie. No biggie. Let's see. I'm going to do some more blue down here. Blue, 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 blue. I like painting blue. Now I just painted across that yellow and, and it made it green. All right. So we've got our blue. Now I'm going to do white. I see I told you we didn't even use hardly any of that blue. I'm going to put a little bit of white in here. It's okay if you get it a little bit dirty. Because that will not show up. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this. So I'm putting white right in the middle of that yellow, but I'm not covering up the entire yellow like you can still see it. And then here, I'm just going to do, it's going to have its own like, you know, explosion coming. It's not following necessarily the yellow. Um, I'm going to do like a little dotted, uh, kind of like a letter F maybe. So like it looks a little, here, I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. See, it looks kind of like the letter F where you're going to dot up and then just, choo, just kind of pull it across in a couple places. Okay. And then I'm going to have some dots of color that kind of, cascade down like it's falling like kind of slivers of light all right so we're going to do that same f like here
that's what I was trying to do with the yellow, but it wasn't successful. So we're trying a different technique, and that is to just paint a letter F rather than trying to use our brush to do something fun and funky. You know, you got to try different, you got to experiment and try different things. What you want to do, uh, what you think will work might not always work the first time. All right. How would I do a flag that has black against a black backdrop? Oh, um, I would probably make one of your blacks a very dark gray. And how you would get that is you would make your black and you wanna make sure it's a very even amount of blue, red, and brown. Then, and, and I, would, I would paint it on, like I painted this and it's like a little bit blue, so then I'd add just a tiny bit of red, just to balance that out. If you feel like it's starting to look too purplish, then add just a little bit of brown to, to make that more black. Then you take that color and add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white to it. You do not need much white at all. And you're basically gonna get like a darker version of this color, like it should be black. And uh, that is probably your best bet for, for doing black on black, is putting your background as like a slightly, like a charcoal gray. All right. All right, so. Now here, we're gonna let our white just really kind of, our white is gonna take over in, in terms of length. It's gonna come out really long. Oops, I'm running into my bottle. You're welcome. You'll have to upload whatever it is you do. And don't forget, you know, to do some little uh, dots, your little boops or clicks, whatever you want to make them. See, now this is really covered up. You really can't tell that I messed up. It's a good thing about layers, right? So we're still just working on the fireworks, you know? I mean, we're already an hour in and still working on the fireworks. So, you know, the flag itself isn't nearly as important. Um, I'm letting my whites be really pervasive. Are you intrigued or scared to see what I do? Uh, Probably more intrigued. So I would say interested. Okay, so some of these areas where I had come out and done the blue, I'm gonna do like a little bit of white kind of attached to them. Uh, let's see. Give a little bit of white come in here. Let's see, we're almost done guys, we're almost done. It's funny, I can actually hear fireworks going off right now in my neighborhood somewhere. I live out in the country so it really could be anywhere. I doubt it's like very close to me. But close enough I can hear it. So. We sure love our fireworks here in America. All right, I'm gonna do some, some white streaks here. 
and do our little Let's see. Let's see what we've got. I sorry that I didn't realize my Discord thing was covering the bottom there. Um, okay, let's see what else. What else? Uh, let's do a couple little like little kind of commas almost. I mean, technically those are little, you know. I don't know. I'm just like making stuff up now. Not even really following the, the thing. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good with the white. I'm happy. Um, if you want, you can take like a little tiny bit of red and come in and do some streaks in here. Oops, that was like way too much paint. So if you ever have way too much paint, well, first of all, I'm just gonna do yellow on top of that and make it look mixed. I'm just mixing yellow in with the red that I just did and then it kind of just gives it like a little more, I don't know, casual appearance, I'm not, really sure how I would qualify that. So this one I kind of got rid of my white. So all I'm doing is I'm dry brushing a little bit. So here's an example of where dry brush is probably good. I'm dry brushing a little bit but I have hardly any paint on my brush and I'm just I'm doing I'm kind of getting that letter F in a little bit more. Close enough. That is amazing. Um, let's see, I do wanna do a little bit more on this. I didn't ever put any red in that. So I'm going to put some red, put some yellow over that red so it like mixes and makes it a little bit lighter color, like a kind of an orangish color. And then I'm gonna go back with my white that makes it look a little bit more explosive. Yep. Sure does. <laughs> did I ever tell you guys my riddle? I don't know if I did. But I'm going to tell you now in case I didn't. Alright, it's not really my riddle. It was told to me by my very, very dear friend, Jen. Um... So here's how it goes. There are two penguins in a canoe in the desert. The first one says, where's the paddle? The second one says, sure does. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna repeat that. There are two penguins in a canoe in the desert. The first penguin says, where's the paddle? The second penguin says, sure does. All right, that's your riddle for the day. You, you figured that one out. Okay, we're gonna do our flag now. So, here's the thing. If you are not doing the American flag, then just keep in mind what I'm telling you to do. Like, um, okay, so, I'm going to talk about like the shadows and stuff and what you can do to create those. So you will basically do the exact same thing, but with the colors that you're gonna be using, okay. Gilfly, if you get it, if anybody gets the riddle, don't say anything. You can always whisper to me or whatever. Don't say anything and give it away if anybody else wants to figure it out. But it's a pretty good riddle. It's, it's surely my favorite. And um, I now use sure does a lot to, to be nonsensical. Okay. So what we're going to do. Good. Mwah. Love it. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to paint in this particular one, we're going to paint our blue first. So um, I'm going to just use this same blue that's here, but we remember we added a little bit of white to it. We need to add a tiny bit of red 
Actually, we might... No, this red has too much orange in it. I'm going to add a little bit of red. And we might add a little bit more blue. What we're going for is like an ultramarine color. And if you've taken my watercolor cl class, you know the ultramarine color is the cool blue. I might need to start with a blue that doesn't have any white in it. This had a lot of white in it. I don't know. We'll see. Let's add a little bit more blue. Oh, yeah, this will be fine. Okay. Well, just think about it, Crixano. I'm sure you will get it eventually, especially since you like linguistics because it's a linguistics kind of riddle. Okay. So I am going to pick up my blue and in this top corner I'm gonna come over like a little bit and do like kind of a line that that curves down like that you have no idea what the riddle means uh, I'm just gonna irritate it for the rest of the day <laughs> well yes I pondered over it for like a week so if you can figure it out in a day you know what? If it want if you want to feel better about it, Crixano, I told it to some people on Brainstrunk, and everybody we we were on a voice call and everybody got it before Schwa. I'm telling on him, but he was the last to get it and it was killing him. But he did finally get it, um, but he was the last to get it. So I'm telling you that because. I know that you are a fan of his, and so hopefully that will make you feel better in that not getting this riddle has nothing to do with, uh, with you know, anything because, you know, Schwa is obviously super intelligent, and, you know, so there you go. Um, I guess so. Technically, yes, it, it, it would require you being familiar with English, the English language. So I'm just painting the whole area. So I did my square. And we're going to probably end up doing two coats here. So if anybody is just now joining, I will go ahead and tell you the riddle that I just told everyone. Um, it's a very fun riddle. It does require knowing some English. Uh, English, like knowing how the English language works is important for this. So if English is not your primary or your first language, then it might be a little bit tricky. But there are two penguins. Oh, you Googled it, Flux. No, don't Google it. Don't Google it. It'll give it, it'll give it away and you'll not. I think you would appreciate it if you think about it. But, okay, two penguins in a canoe in the desert. First penguin says, where's the paddle? The second penguin says, sure does. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. Now we need to doctor our red a little bit. So like I said, the red in the flag, in our flag, and it, as well as some other flags, like the Union Jack, for example, if you were doing that one, um, the red in that is a little bit more of a blood red. So, um, we're going to add a tiny bit of blue to this. So we're just going to use the red that we have. And I'm just going to add a little bit of blue. Now a little blue goes a long way, so I'm not going to add a ton of blue. Just a little bit. In fact, I have learned my lesson before. Um, I have in the past added too much blue, so I'm going to actually put that there. Pick up a little bit of it. And mix it in first because I have 100% see even that might have been too much 
Oh, I'm going to be so mad if I, j even after taking all that out. That's too much. All right, well, now we have a very nice maroon color. That's not the color we're going to be using. So here's what I'm going to do. I got to make a new red. Yar. Okay. That is definitely too maroon. See, even using uh, less blue, and I still put too much. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do this time. Since I already have this color mixed, I'm gonna mix a little bit of this color in with my red. That's better. God, that's still, that's still really rusty. I'm gonna add a little bit more red to that. I mean, it is a blood red, but it's just a little bit too much. So apparently mixing colors today isn't, isn't the best part of my stream. Okay. You forgot about the desert part, so I'm glad you repeated it. Why would a penguin be asking about a paddle in the desert? Well, they're in a canoe. Duh. I mean, why would you have a canoe without a paddle? All right, that's a good red. That's a good red. It's still a little bit orangey, it's still a little bit rusty, but I think it'll do. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick up a little bit of our red. Now, the American flag has 13 stripes. Um, I can't remember how many of each one, but we don't have to be exact on this. The idea is to make it look like the American flag and basically as long as you have red and white stripes people will get it with the you know the stars okay wait there's a canoe okay yes there are two penguins in a canoe in the desert the first penguin says where's the paddle the second penguin says sure does okay <laughs> yes the canoe is an important feature not the most important feature. The paddle is the most important feature. And maybe one other thing that I can't tell you because it would give it away. So what I'm doing is just painting my stripe. Now remember what I told you guys that like the stripes on this side are going to be smaller than the ones than when they than when they get to over here. Um, that is going to apply right now. Okay. And actually, Teacher Margo, I didn't even ask if we do have kids on the stream. I didn't know if your kids today were following. Because if they are, then we definitely need NSFW stuff to be, to be, uh, hidden. Okay, so what I did here is I, this is very, very small, but I slightly overlap. So this is where I'm going to start doing um, kind of an area of shadow. It's going to be like kind of a triangle that goes along the side here. So with this red, I did just a little corner because it's going to show that it's recessed behind it. Um, here, I'll just draw it so you can see. Okay. So if you guys can see that, basically what's going to happen is this part of the flag is flapping backwards. Hold on. You got it now, not the answer just with the riddles. Oh, okay, why is the canoe in the desert? I, I don't know, maybe they needed to get somewhere and canoe is the best way to do it. 
I'm not sure. Um, I mean, why are two penguins in the desert for that matter? I don't know. Um, okay, so I was just showing you that because it's going, it's going to go back. Um, we're going to be painting over this line, so no worries about the fact that um, I did that. But here, here's why this is important: is we're going to have another red stripe. that's going to come up and it might be easier if you are doing a different flag I would recommend looking at a picture to get an idea but so this what I'm doing is I'm making it look like it's going back behind okay Well, I guess this is our 13th stripe here. I think it's like supposed to represent, but see how it's starting to look like a, a shape? Right, exactly what Guildfly said. It's a riddle, so logic doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not supposed to be logical. So yeah, in the United States, the 13 stripes represent the original 13 colonies. They were British colonies. And then after the Americans, they were not Americans yet. Well, I guess they were Americans because they were in America, but they weren't calling themselves Americans. I mean, they were, they were, you know, British citizens. Uh, so this red I've like gone wonky on so hang on here's what I'm going to do if it's still wet this is what you can do to like capture it get a little bit of water on it and pick it up with your brush with a clean brush because we're going to be painting over it with white so it's not a problem we just want to get most of the red up because you don't want to have to try to paint white over thick red Okay, here we go. Um, I wouldn't give up just yet. You haven't really thought about it very long. Especially like since you're linguistics, I wouldn't give up just yet. I think you'll quite, quite enjoy this riddle. Me telling you that it has to do with linguistics should give you some, I, some hint. It's, it's a minor hint, but it is a hint. Okay. Man, I really did not do this well at all. Okay, well, that's all right. <coughs> There's a couple of options here. We could come up, which is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna come up, we're gonna make this stripe thicker I think it's not, uh, sorry, I think it's too dry. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's not too dry. What? I can still fix it. I thought maybe it was too dry. We are going to, this is, we are not using the white of the canvas, just so you guys know. We're going to be making a white because we're going to use like kind of an off-white, a slight off-white. So it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. So we do have another stripe that's down here at the bottom. That's why I needed to, to do that because we do have like a third stripe. <laughs> my poor, my poor flag here is really struggling. 
Okay. You would almost think I didn't know what the American flag really looked like. It's possible. I mean, I know generally what it looks like, but I mean, I don't look at it that closely, you know? Not, who looks at the flag, like, super close? Nobody? Well, somebody. I guess somebody does. This is why you need, like, a reference photo, which I have, and I'm still mucking it up, so... <laughs> You know, there you go. Okay, let's see if we can space the the stripes apart this time without, um... okay, so we're gonna have one. I think what happened too is I think I didn't bring the blue down enough. I think that's what it is. So here's what we're gonna do. There. I'm gonna bring the blue down. Ha ha! It's not fixed, but it'll be fixed once we add the white. Okay, so let's get our red. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually paint, we've got three more stripes down here. So we've got a stripe that's gonna start here. It's gonna be about this fat. I need some white. So I'm gonna do another stripe that's gonna start here. And then I'm going to do another stripe that's going to start here. And see, that still leaves quite a bit of white, which makes me think that I really could still add a little bit more blue. So I'm going to bring our blue down. Oops. So maybe it's better to kind of measure out there you go now we have room for our red here because we didn't have room before All right, who, who thought that the American flag part of it was gonna be the hard one? I mean, I guess you could have guessed that because it seems like fireworks aren't really that hard to do. Okay, so two penguins now are helping are in a canoe in the desert. No, it's not that kind of linguistics. It's a different part of linguistics. A different part, the spoken part. It's the part of linguistics that I like, <laughs> not the technical stuff. Okay, so we've got our three red here. So let's go ahead and do our three red on the other side and then we'll connect them. Okay, so we've got, I'm gonna do one, two, three there all right so these are going to okay So just to let you know, the drawing you're doing with pencil and crayon looks very different, but you're hoping it's a good different. I am almost positive it's a good different. Like, I love when people, like, you know, to kind of do their own thing. And especially since you're doing it in a different medium, you know, it's just going to be really interesting. In fact, 
Crixano did a really good example of that. I did a drawing of a boat a couple weeks ago. If you look in the um, if you look in the server, like go back up in the art share or art crit rather. Um, Crixano took the boat drawing that we did and did it in several different media. And it just shows like what you can do. And he actually took it and did really interesting things with it. Like, so I think that the um, oil pastel or, or it was some, or Conte crayon or something like that. Um, he did like the boat really close up. So like it really changed and abstracted the painting a little bit or the drawing a little bit. It was really cool. Anyway, I urge you to go look at what he did and you can see like how just changing the medium can really can really change everything about it. Yeah, they're they're all really great. Uh, you're not very familiar with etymology or historical linguistics, if it's that. Uh, does it rely on word or words sounding like other words? It sure does. Sure does. Man, I just can't get over it. It's my favorite riddle probably ever. Ever, ever, ever. I can't think of a better riddle. Uh, collage? Collage. Is that what you're trying to say is collage? Or am I thinking of something else? Well, you know, just keep thinking about it. You don't have to get it now. All right, so we've got our stripes on here. Now we need our stars, okay? So we're going to take this white that I already have in here. And we're going to make it a slightly uh, creamy color by mixing in some of our yellow. So just a little bit. We do not need much. A little bit of yellow. In fact, I might need a little bit more white because I didn't have much in there. There we go. Better. just I mean a dash of red just a dash not much it's just enough to kind of tint it it's a slight orangey color okay so it's still white but now it's a very creamy white all right so what we're gonna do is we are going to okay so collage is c-o-l-l-a-g-e collage um it's your favorite type yes i do too i like collage quite a bit um and in fact i do fabric collages which are pretty cool where i actually take different pieces of fabric and put them together and um I do not have one with me. I, I had some that I could like show you guys. Maybe maybe my next class, uh, if I can remember, I will try to uh, show you guys one of my fabric collages. But okay, Kriksana said you were also concerning the fact that the desert and dessert sound the same, but you don't know, or rather sound very similar. Yeah, it's something along those lines. That is not it, but it is very similar to that. You are on the right track. Okay, just different words. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and paint now. Some of my red is still wet, so I'm gonna start um, up at the top here. Now, here is where we can fix some of these areas that we, we previously messed up. And by we, I mean me, you know. Let's be real, it was me, I did it. So I'm trying to be very careful not to
flux. You were on the right track, but got the wrong words. Yes, exactly. So you just picked the wrong words, but right, right thinking. So it looks like I'm not doing much because this color is so similar, but I'm going to hold it up so you, hopefully you can see. But it is, it is actually different. Uh, nope, still can't see. Oh no, there you go. Like if I hold it up, see how this is a little bit creamier than down here? So you can see the difference. But my, my light is so bright, it's hard to tell. All right, here's where we're going to really fix things all this mucky muck here is about to be demolished. Goodbye mucky muck. And because I got that paint up as quickly as I could, I'm not going to have to probably do a, a ton of coats. Otherwise I just have to do more than one coat. Look at that. It's so pretty. I love it. I love it, y'all. Okay. My paintbrush is starting to get a little loaded. What do you call a blind doe? I mean, I would say, we'll see, like, so I think of, like, what that makes me think of is the do -si do which is a thing, so I would say no si do <laughs> but that's probably too cheesy. Uh, well, let's see, a blind doe. No idea. Ah! <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hold on. I'm writing it down. I am writing it down. That is hilarious. Okay. That is a good one. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Just think about it if you had an accent, Crixano. Like maybe you were from New York or something. I got no idea. It's a no idea. You know? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's keep going with the colors here. We're getting close, y'all. We still got to do the flagpole. Don't forget, we're not doing keeping the flagpole just white. It's going to be gray. So I want to keep moving so that we get all this, this uh, white in here. And we still have to do some shadowy bits over here. That's what I really want. Those of you who are doing different flags, I really want you to see that part. So, Krixana, do you get it now that I said it that way? Yeah, what is a doe? Doe, a deer, a female deer, ray, a drop of golden sun, right? You, come on, you know that. Everybody knows that. Yes, it's a deer. A doe is a type of deer, a female deer, yes. It's a female dia. No idea. Get it? This is where linguistics, other, other areas of linguistics are probably helpful. 
this is my area of linguistics. I'm an Anglophile. I love, love listening to accents and colloquialisms and I can usually do, I can usually imitate pretty accents pretty well, usually. I'm not going to give you guys my, my Harry Potter reading voice. <laughs> Especially for you Brits out there, you'd, you'd uh, just laugh me, laugh me out of the room at my accent. But whatever, my nephew buys it. That's what matters, right? Because he's the one I'm reading Harry Potter to. Or my niece. She likes my accents. Molly. But yeah. But I do different accents. My favorite probably is Dobby. He's a fun one. My Alexa. Uh... I missed the second part of the riddle. Oh, there's a second part? Harry, Harry popped her for days. Hey, uh, oh, I don't know if you meant to put the popped her, but that's hilarious. I actually call him Harry Pothead sometimes because I think it's funny. <laughs> um, there's a second part of the riddle. Hold on, I'm finding it. What do you call blind doe? No idea. What do you call blind doe with no legs? Still no, ah, oh, still no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness <laughs> I did miss that oh man <laughs> that is excellent flex you're my new favorite jokester Dobby. Harry Plopper. <laughs> You're a massive fan of Lord of the Rings too. You have a big collection of Tolkien books. Very nice. That was actually the first book that I remember my mom reading to me was The Hobbit. Okay, so um, I'm going to wash off my brush because we're going to do the stars. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we do the stars. Oops, oops, oops. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Don't listen to me. We're doing the stars. Okay, I'm getting paint just on the tip of my brush, okay? And, oops, that was too much. That's okay. I'm putting, I'm just giving the illusion that there are stars. I don't even know how many rows of stars there are. This is like way too much though. Okay, let's see. Still don't really understand, but oh well. Sorry, I'm not good at spelling today. Oh, you're good. Uh, it's text. It's text chat. Eh, you don't have to be good at spelling. Uh, you love Lord of the Rings too in every way. That's cool. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is great. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a very thin line of white. Okay, this is starting to annoy me. It's like very watery for some reason. And I don't like that. Don't like it. Going up the flag. Because it's got that, um, flags always have that, like, strip of white because of the way they're made. Okay. Good enough. Okay. 
Okay, it looks like the American flag. Now, we need to do some shadow bits over here. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I want to make a new color. Um, we're gonna mix a little bit of the white with blue and burnt umber. But since I have this like weird brown here, instead of using burnt umber, I'm gonna just use this. Uh, why do you feel dumb? I don't know, riddles are hard. I wouldn't feel dumb. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix, I'm just gonna put new white in here because to be perfectly honest, I, I, I'm gonna need some of this for later. So I'm putting new white. And I'm gonna just grab a little tiny bit of blue, like hardly any, like look, I barely have any on there. And mix it in with the white. That should just tint it, a little bit of blue. Um, so the thing about it is, is you have to think about saying no idea with an accent. Okay, so like if I said, if I was singing this song, Do a Deer, right? You know that song, right? You know the Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do, right? Okay, right? I mean, I want you to answer me and tell me if you know that song. Because I'm about to sing it with an accent and I want you to hear how I'm saying it. Okay, I'm picking up a little bit of brown. Also and mixing straight into this. That might not have been enough brown, actually. Hold on, we need more brown. You love that song, okay, listen. Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. Okay, right, so do a deer. Get it, deer? It's, a, it's an accented way of saying deer. No idea. You see it? No I, so they're blind. No I, Dia. There you go. There you go. That should explain it. Okay, I'm picking up a little bit more of my brown. Hopefully that explained it, Crix. Like I said, this is the other side of linguistics. This is my favorite side. I like to just listen to audio files of people speaking. Okay, this is a nice color. This is what I want. All right, so I'm gonna take this kind of purpley grayish color. Oh, you got that part. Oh, then it's not just your type of humor. Well, that's fine. Yeah, it's a play on words and a play on accents. I like puns and things like that. That's my jam. Okay, so remember I drew that line here? All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna actually just paint in that, that angle. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Luckily I have some red, I'm gonna have to cover that, but that's fine. So this is all over here, this is all shadow. So see, I'm, I'm painting in the shadow. I'm gonna have to clean up this outside because I, I got, uh, and I took away my black, so I cannot clean the outside up. Well, whatever. Whatever. I'm channeling my inner Marissa Tomei, who by the way is an amazing actress. But I love her accent. Love, 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 love. Or, or my, uh, you hate German sausages, they are the worst. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's great. The very worst. <laughs> okay, um, let's mix, let's mix, um, well, hold on. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of this darker color here. And I'm going to use that. Oops. So all I did was I took a little bit of my red and I mixed some of that darker color that I made. Or you could take just a wee, 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 wee bit of blue and add it to it. 
and that's going to be our dark red for this area to, to make it look like it's in the shadows. Uh, I guess I need a little bit up here. So see, now it looks shadowy. Looks like it's farther back. How about that? Look at that. Now, I do want to bring my white shadow. Uh, isn't that amazing? Like how just changing slightly the color of the paint really pushes it, recesses it back. Um, I am going to bring some of this color up a little bit. Just a little bit, just to show that it's bending. So this is what I wanted to show you guys who are doing other flags. Like I think uh, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my red, my red red, and just kind of blend a little bit. But I think that um, Whatever your colors are, just make a slightly different dark, like a slightly darker version of that color and put it in your fold. That's what I wanted to teach you. That is what I wanted to teach you. There we go. That's a, that was a little bit darker than I anticipated, but it looks good. I think it's fine. Okay. All right, let's see. Now, um, we need to do the flagpole. Okay, so uh, so let's first do the gray of the flagpole, which I might just darken this one, this white. <coughs> <coughs> I am open to suggestions, but I do have my schedule. Uh, Artful, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I am open to suggestions. I have my schedule planned through the end of July, but yeah, I'm absolutely open to suggestions. Um, I would just have to like find a good reference photo, um, one that is not copyrighted. That's key. Um, I Sometimes I can take my own pho photographs and things like that as reference photos if you have something that I can easily access. Uh, but yeah, let me know your suggestions. How are you doing today, Artful? How's your weekend so far? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue. Well, Flex, now I'm on pins and needles. I wanna know what you were gonna recommend. I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue and I'm gonna mix a little bit of this like, uh, bad, no, I hate to hear that, why? I'm gonna mix a little bit of this like kind of grayish white color that we made. What's made your weekend bad so far? I hate to hear that. Okay, so we've got this whitish blue. Now we're gonna mix in some of this brown from before, or you can mix in like straight um, burnt umber if you've got it. I'm trying to make a gray color. And this wasn't really strictly brown, it was like kind of a reddish brown. All 
All right, so I'm getting a gray color here. And I might lighten it up a little bit more. I don't know why I did this on the side instead of in another well, but you know, whatever. All right, so I've got a good gray color. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more white to that. Uh, it's more how to break down what I see in real life and sketching it, you know, like if you are uh, outdoors and you want to capture the view in pencil. Oh, um, I might be able to do that. I might be able to bring in like a still life or something that we look at, you know. So Artful said someone won't talk to you. Oh, that's not good. Is it a good friend of yours that won't talk to you? Um, if so... I do have a possible solution, although I don't know the situation, but a possible solution, which is that I've had people that either I didn't want to talk to or they weren't talking to me, and I just confronted them and said, we need to work this out because I value your friendship. So let's, let's talk about it and uh, see, what we can, see what we can work out. You want to learn the flag or you want to learn how to get someone to talk to you? <laughs> the thing about it is, is that when somebody is, is upset with you, they usually have a reason and maybe it's just difficult for them to communicate that reason. But if you probe and you say, look, your friendship's important to me, I value you, and I think what you have to say is important, so I want to hear your feedback. And then listen to their feedback and don't get defensive about it and don't... Um, you know, don't immediately lash out and say, well, I, I, you know, explaining, giving reasons for why you did something or whatever. Just take what they say and chew on it. And you can say, you can say, you know what? That's really great feedback. I'm going to go think about it for a little bit and see what I can do to, to, to repair, uh, you know, our relationship because, and then go think about it and take what you want from it. It's not like, it's not like you're admitting that they're hundred percent right. But the thing is, is that their perspective is their perspective. And if you value their friendship, you want to know where they're coming from. If somebody thinks you're being a jerk, even if you didn't intend to be a jerk, maybe some part of you is coming across that way. So it's worth listening to what they have to say. Um, and like I said, just taking it for what it is, thinking about it for a little bit, and then coming back to them with a solution. And I think that that's probably the best way. Oh, you, yeah, you meant the painting. I know. Uh, but I love psychology so much, so... I'm always, I'm always thinking about that. Okay, so in the, in the top bit up here, I'm just doing like kind of, a, I'm, I'm only going half in. Well, I recommend um, you watch, I, I do record my VODs. Um, so you should be able to access these. Um, the best ones are the ones that have like an official looking title screen. It's like, it's usually black with gold writing or gold with black writing. Uh, those are the ones that are the best because they're highlights. So that means I've clipped the dumb bits out, like, um, you know, like my intro page and stuff like that. And sometimes if I have like weird technical difficulties. Um, so, oh, you're very welcome. Absolutely. Yeah, that's tough. That, that really stings, you know, when someone won't talk to you because you feel like you want to repair things, but there's no communication, you know, and that like, it's just the worst. It's just the absolute worst when someone won't communicate with you. Well, you don't know what he's doing online, though, so keep that in mind that I mean, if you see that he's like playing games and stuff, that would stink. But like, if he's just like, I'm online all the time, but I am super busy all the time. I'm usually doing homework and things like that. So like, yes, it shows that I'm online, but I'm not actually online. I'm not available. You know what I mean? So it's possible. You know, if he's a really good friend, I would give him the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so I painted one side gray. That actually is a little bit darker gray than I wanted, but it's okay. Um, now I'm going to pick up this white. And on the other side, let's 
So I'm just kind of painting around that circle there. I'll show you, um, we're gonna, we're gonna actually um, do something with the ball there, but I'm gonna actually paint the white on. Well, here's what it's gonna do. Since that gray should still be a little wet, it should blend a little bit. Yeah, I will tell you, Artful, that on this stream, we 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 get pretty serious about uh, our issues. We talk about our issues on this stream. So you are always welcome. Um, it's always good to just get it out there, you know. Someday, at some point, um, I do, I always do lessons. So almost every, um, I, I mean, it pretty much is every week. I do crochet lessons on Tuesdays and I do um, paint uh, drawing lessons on Fridays and then painting on Saturdays. And sometimes it's acrylic, sometimes it's watercolor, um, but I, I do, uh, but I do some kind of painting. Eventually, I'm going to add digital painting as well and probably piano because I really want to teach piano. I mean, I, I already am a piano teacher, but I would really like to teach it on stream is what I mean. Okay, so what I did is I mixed a little bit of this gray. I mixed a little bit of gray with a little bit of white and uh, just kind of swirled it. And then I brought in a tiny bit of gray on either side. So I'm gonna hold this up so you can see. So see, I kind of swirled in and made like a lighter gray and then I brought a little bit of the dark gray on either side. And what that does is it makes it from far away look like it's rounded. Okay. So that is pretty good. I think we're pretty much done. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. Hold on, I just mixed the wrong color. I mean, I mixed the right color, but not enough of it. I'm gonna mix in some white with this, this gray. I'm not sure how I feel about this dark gray. I feel like it's too dark. So I'm gonna just come in with like a slightly lighter gray. Yeah, I think that's better. I think that's a better flagpole. It was too dark and what it was doing was it was blending with the background and uh, not cool. That's not cool. So Crixano says, speaking of issues, you can't get this riddle for the life of me. I want to give up, but part of me doesn't, which means I'm going to be stressing over it all day. You know what? I might give you a hint in DM if you really need it. Um, I mean, I feel like if you just think about hom uh, homophones, you know, you probably could get there. You are already thinking along those lines, so I don't feel like it's too much to give that away. Um, thank you, Artful. I appreciate that. And Artful, if you want to hear the riddle that Crixano was referring to, I said it earlier. So there's two penguins in a canoe in the desert. The first penguin says, where's the paddle? The second penguin says, sure does. That's the riddle. So if you would like to think about that, Crixano is currently thinking about it. I will talk about it in future streams if, if we have to, if, if uh, the answer needs to be revealed. But I'm sh I have faith that you guys will get it. I really do. I already gave a big hint, which is that it has to do with the English language and it has to do with homophones. If English isn't your first language, though, I will say it might be difficult because it relies on really knowing English. So what I did there is just I mixed a little water with my paint and it just makes it a little more fluid when I go to brush it on so that it's not making like really big, big strokes. I can get like little tiny strokes. OK, now there was one part that I want to fix. And what that is, is that is this part here. 
I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it. See how like choppy it is there? All right, that's gonna bug me, so I am gonna fix that. All right, so in order to do that, I need to make new black. You guys remember how I make black? It is a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, oh, well, sorry, a decent amount of brown, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of red. Now, I have some red and blue in here, so I'm just gonna put some brown down. Now, the brown I'm using is, um, I don't need very much black, so I'm not putting very much. The brown I'm using is burnt umber. Now, remember we made ours, um, this was the black earlier, so I'm gonna match it to that. So I'm gonna get a little bit of my red. That's probably way too much, honestly. We'll make it work though. We always do. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of blue. <laughs> I got too, too much red and not enough blue. Let's see if this blue, there's, oh, they're good. There was some left. All right, so that's pretty dark. So we're gonna test it against this black here because that's the black that we used before. So let's see. Plex said, Google pricks. I feel the same about these things, so I spare myself the pain. Ah, that's funny. I don't know, I think Crixano would beat himself up if he Googled it, so I don't think you should do that. <laughs> I think I think that you should uh, keep thinking about it. Like I said, it took me a week to get it. You know, it took Schwa several hours to get it, and that was with, you know, us, like, talking about it and stuff. So, I mean, it, it's difficult. It's not meant to be gotten right away. Um, and you said you've been trying to do that. Uh, by the way, this does look really good. Uh, you don't have faith, huh? Well, don't have to. I have enough faith for everybody. Okay, so I'm, I am getting some of this and I'm putting it next to it. That, it needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna get just a little bit more brown. I wonder if I can use this reddish brown that's already here. Cause I really just hate putting more paint when I'm, I know I'm almost done. Let's see if I can, that might be too much. Let's see. That might be too, too reddish brown. Let's see. As long as we can approximate the black, we're fine. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. So, we just need to be saturated. And I'm just doing little tiny bits. I'm not like trying to paint whole stripes or whatever. I'm just covering up my rough edges there. And then what I'm gonna do, because this is a slightly different black than our background, I'm just lightly pulling my brush towards me just a little bit. Here, let me see if I can show you. See how it's wet? I'm gonna just lightly pull my brush towards me just a little bit. See like that? And then what that does is it just kind of blends it into the background. There we go. Now, the most important part of your painting is your signature because this is your artwork. You want to sign it. Um, this is not another accent based one. No, it is not. It has to do with homophones. Homophones. Uh, and technically dessert and desert are not homophones. They are homo similars. I don't know what the word is for that. There is a word for that. I just don't know it, but it, they're similar sounding, but they're not the same. Um, okay, I like to use a paint pen. So these these um, these are the kind that you have to like push down, you know, to oops, well, that you push down to uh, get them started. 
All right. So we sign. Now, the final part that we always do, and by the way, Art Fool, since you are new to the stream, I want to just point out to you, um, Flux, can you or Crixano, somebody um, throw up my Discord link? All right, so right here, you'll notice that I've got a Discord um, address. Okay, so Flux, thank you. So um, Flux just pulled up my Discord link. So if you click on this link, it will take you to my Discord server. And my Discord server is where you can share your artwork. Um, you can look at like the reference photos um, of like what we're gonna be painting for the day. So I put my reference photos up the morning of whatever day, you know, what we're gonna be doing. Um, we chit chat about things and post our projects and all kinds of stuff. So it's a really, just a great meeting place for artists. But one of the biggest things we do, there's something called art crit. So we do a critique. Um, okay, so I'm going to critique this and I'm instead of trying to say what I like or don't like, which that's tough because that is how we talk, but I wanna say what's effective and ineffective like so what's really working towards my ultimate goal so my ultimate goal was i wanted this to look realistic like a, a flag with some fireworks okay so um that is the goal that i was going for so i'm going to think about the things in this painting that make it really look like that and then the things that really don't that i could maybe work on for next time okay so with that in mind i'm going to take a look at this so one of the things i can do is I could actually, um, even more, if I wanted to, I don't know if I will, but for next time, even more, I might come in with like a pure red. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna try it right now and just see what it does. Because I think that if I came in with a pure red, right at this top part here on the flag, it would make it look even more like it was in the light. Um, so let's just see what that does. Let's see what that does. So I'm just putting some pure red here. Now, we want it to blend, right? Uh, so what I'm doing is I, so over here I have shadow where I basically had a darker red and in the middle I have that kind of blood red. But if I take like the pure red, which is a little bit warmer, so it doesn't have any blue added to it then what it'll do is it'll make it look lighter on this side. Now, right now it doesn't look so great, but we're gonna blend and I'm gonna show you guys how to blend on your, uh, like directly on the um, canvas. I actually should make these a little bit more red here. So you said, um, the waviness looks really effective in your opinion. Um, you've posted a pick in Art Crick now. I'm gonna try to paint it on your canvas pad tomorrow. Awesome, okay, right, because you did it, you said in pencil, right? So um, I am really excited to see that. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm painting All right, now I'm gonna show you how to blend. So right now these aren't blending very well. Now there's, a, if you still have some of your original color that was in the, that is helpful, so I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit right here, right on the other side, just right where the, the bright color ends. I'm gonna put a little bit of my um, original red color. Okay, and then I'm going to wash off my brush and dry it. And then you're gonna do what's called feathering. And I'm gonna feather the two colors together. So all I'm doing, and you wanna constantly be, here, I'm gonna get a new paper towel so you can see what I'm doing. So it should be a pretty, almost nothing on your brush. I mean, see how there's hardly anything on my brush. And I'm coming in and just feathering the two colors together. And then you, you wipe off any ex excess paint feather the two colors together. And all I'm doing is just basically brushing back and forth with a dry brush, that's called feathering. Okay. 
And what this does is it blends the two colors. Now you need the two colors to still be wet. So that's kind of an important part, but okay. So you've got that. So that, um, let's see, hold on. This, I don't like how much it, it got rid of a lot of the, the lighter red. So I'm gonna, there. Looks like I didn't have an, enough coat. All right, so that right there, I think already is gonna make it look a little bit more effective just by having that lighter red. Like see, so it looks like really bright on this side, then it goes to a middle tone and then it, it's got this part that kind of is, is recessed back behind it so it's, it's darker. Um, okay, you said it's not as bold, but you like it. Oh, I can't wait to see it. We're gonna go over and look at that. We're gonna actually look at Guildfly's um, painting here. Okay, so I've got the blue up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this blue, just a dab of white, like hardly any, just a little. Oops, maybe a little more than that. Maybe that's too much. Man, I'm like, there we go. Okay, so we want it to just be slightly lighter and then we'll come in here. And in in just on the right hand side. Now, one thing you can do is you can start dry brushing where like my, you know, it's not wet anymore, but I'm still like moving my brush around and that will also blend. So instead of doing the feathering thing, that's another way of blending. There you go. So already I think that looks more effective just having it brighter on this side because, you know, supposedly we've got, okay, sounds good. Um, supposedly, you know, you've got light coming from all these different directions and stuff like that. So I think that that is a lot more effective. Um, I do notice some areas where I maybe could, you know, use a little bit of my white and then just like blend the two. Oops. Yeah, that's good. So all I'm doing is I, I put a little bit of my kind of dark white and then um, I'm now putting a little bit of my light white as a mix and it's making like an in-between white. <laughs> there. So it just gives it a little bit more realism. Okay. That being done, so that was one of the things and I fixed it. Another thing I could do is I really would like to work on my fireworks. Um, let's just look at the original real quick. Okay, so in the reference photo, if we look at the original. So see, it's got this dark part over here. Oh, it's got like a little bit of a dark part right there. Okay, well that's something we can add. Um, also, like seeing the white there, it's like a little bit of dark. Um, if we look at the fireworks, there just seems to be more intention. Like there's a lot more of like the little, the little dots and things like that. So I think I just need more of those. All right. So let's, let's come back. 